In this video, we visit Sarajevo. We explore the abandoned bobsled track and military tower. This is one of the coolest things that I've ever done. We also visit the Genocide Museum and the Sarajevo Tunnel where we find out what life was really like here back in the 90s. I can't believe I'm in the tunnel in Sarajevo. Hi friends, welcome to a new place. We are in Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina. I really hope I've said that correctly. Once again, here with Adventure and Architect, hey, hey. here with Sam. This is kind of like deja vu because I think the last vlog that Sam was in, we was at a cable car place in Dubrovnik. I refreshed and energized from my little stay in my Airbnb and I'm getting good vibes from Sarajevo already. Like last night, my hostel is amazing. Igor, I'm gonna, get him in this vlog at some point because he's just really funny and he's really cool. Today we are going to an abandoned Olympic park up the mountains in Sarajevo. So before we go anywhere, make sure you hit subscribe like down there or down there. Follow me on Instagram at Dane Luca for daily updates. And yeah, let's just see what Sarajevo has to offer us today. Time to get in the cable car. Oh my God. So we are now in the cable car. It was 20 marks, so it's probably about between nine and 10 euros. So it's pretty, pretty affordable, I would say. And that is to get up the mountain and back down. And then from when we get up there, apparently it's like a short walk to the abandoned Olympic village. I'm really loving Bosnian people. They're so friendly. Like they just want to talk to you. And like, are you from London? I'm like, yes, I'm not from London. I'm just from outside London, but no one knows where I'm from. So I just say I'm from London. A Little bit of a liar, but it's fine. The wind is going wild. Like, I feel like the car is shaking. It's actually pranging me out a little bit because we're so, like, if you've got vertigo, this is probably not for you. That feeling of when you, like, look down when you're really high up. Uh -huh. But these views are just unreal. Okay, so that was a pretty cool ride. So we've just reached the top so cool up here and the temperature is like 10 degrees cooler so that means i'm not going to be a sweaty betty all day call me out on my accent my accent keeps changing i think because i'm hanging around with people all over the world so my accent is just going a bit all over the place but yeah check out this view <laughs> Okay, so we are at the top now and Sarajevo is surprising me like there is a lot of nature here like we're up in the mountains it's a bit cooler so I'm pretty <laughs> sure that in the 1980s Sarajevo hosted the Olympics I'm gonna fact check that because I don't want to be telling you guys wrong information and we are at an abandoned bobsled track which is really fun we have just got on the bobsled track and it's so freaking cool I'm gonna try and not swear in my vlogs because when I've been editing I've realized I swear a lot so occasional f-bombs okay on this <laughs> channel but I'm gonna try tone it down one thing people do if you're quite into art people come up here to graffiti and I can already see there is a lot of graffiti all over this bobsled track it's just crazy to think like a few years ago people were like coming down here in a bobsled Don't know why, this is just so cool. I'm almost like fangirling at this old bobsled track. So definitely come and check this thing out. Seeing lots of cool graffiti. If I had spray can, I would definitely try and graffiti, but I would probably just have to do a stick man. As well as there being a bobsled up here, you can also come to the abandoned Bistrik Tower. I'm not quite sure what it is. Let's go have a read. Okay, so there's a military fortress on Mountain Trebevik. Okay, so it was basically an observation point for the military back in, oh, it was abandoned in 1967. You can literally see the bullet holes 
in the tower right now. This is the first full day and this is just the best. This is just the best, you guys, I'm so cringy. Right, let's go in. Should we go in? Yeah. Yeah, okay. This is scary. This is one of the coolest things that I've ever done. Is this stairs? Yeah. Oh my God. Dad, if you're watching this, I am so sorry. Do you think it's safe to go up? It kind of feels safe. Yeah. Probably a bit risky, probably shouldn't yeah. do this, probably but it's yeah. fine because Sam's an architect, so yeah, just be careful the hole right there. there's literally bullet holes everywhere. Okay, the current situation is I look crazy. It's a bit windy today. Actually, it's very windy today. And I tried sending the drone up thinking, I'm gonna get some cool shots. And the drone flew 500 meters away and landed on some random land. And luckily, me and Sam, well, Sam was a lot calmer than me. I was like, I freaking lost the drone. And the drone did an emergency landing, which has never happened to me. I literally freaked out. And it was just sat there on the grass, just chilling. We are very, I was literally just so high dehydrated, so dehydrated. So it literally just bought me and Sam four drinks because we needed it. So I'm gonna check out for a bit, but I'll see you guys later. Good morning guys, or I shall say good afternoon. I've been editing all morning, sorting out some photos and videos for tomorrow. But today is a new day. Today is Monday, which is really weird. I had a really good day yesterday. First full day in Sarajevo, and I absolutely love it here. I would definitely, I can already say, like I would recommend coming here if you haven't come here before. So after the drone incident yesterday, I ended up going back to the hostel for like an hour, had a cup of tea because obviously I'm English, that's what we do. And then we went to watch the sunset at the viewpoint. I'll leave, I'll put like a little picture or a snippet here. I didn't really vlog, but I went with a few guys from my hostel. And then we went to the gastro pub, which Witty Travels, if you're watching this, I don't know if you follow me on YouTube, they recommended me go to this gastro pub. I think it was called Fafrika. I'll leave the details below, but I highly recommend really good beers really good burgers so yeah today we are going to the museum of genocide and war and i'm just getting some lunch at a falafel place which i came to a few days ago found it on happy cow of course so just waiting for my food Right, so lunch is in the bag, really good. Absolutely love that falafel place. I will definitely be returning again before I leave Sarajevo. This next bit might be quite heavy, but I'm going to the Museum of Crimes Against Humanity and Genocide. I was introduced to everything that happened in Bosnia when I was in Mostar, so I'm gonna be finding out a lot more now. I've heard it's quite heavy, so I think it's gonna spend a couple of hours in there or however long it takes. Maybe treat myself to an ice cream. I 
I've just left that museum and I will say that was very sad. So many bad things happened in this country that I'd never even heard of until I came here. There was genocide, there was mass murder, there was rape houses. There was just a lot. There was concentration camps. Come and check out Sarajevo. Come and go and visit that museum. I'll leave the details below. And just learn about the history of Sarajevo and what happened in the Yugoslav war because it's just really sad. I'm shocked at what happened, but I'm also shocked that I never learned anything about that in school. You know, we learned about, you know, World War II and World War I, but we never learned about this horrific war that happened in Europe not so long ago, like literally less than 30 years ago. I feel a bit uh, right now, but that's fine. That is what happens when you read a lot of things. It's very interesting. People have donated items and you can read stories, you can see pictures, you can see videos. I will say it is a bit graphic. You know, I saw pictures of dead children. They have like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. Definitely check it out. But I'm gonna go and chill out for a bit. I think I need a cup of tea. Okay, I've just realized I can give you a tour of my hostel as well. I, hopefully there's not many people in because I'll just be really quiet and awkward. But it's a really cool hostel and I highly recommend you come and stay here because the guy who owns it and he lives here, Igor, he's amazing. World's biggest key. So this is my bed up here. There's like three other people in the room. It's honestly one of the most comfiest beds that I've ever stayed in, in a hostel. And I've stayed in a lot of hostel beds, so that's saying a lot. And I think this bit here is my favorite part of the hostel. This is like the chill out area where everyone comes in, usually like during the daytime and in the evening. And yeah, it's just a really nice place to chill out. And just out there is the, the main sort of street that goes up to the old town in Sarajevo. So it's really nice to chill here because it's like quite cool in this little balcony bit. Okay, so this is the spot that changed history forever. It is said to be where Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in 1914, which actually prompted World War One. I'm going to go and find my tour. It's very loud right now. Hello, so we have just arrived at the tunnel, which is quite far out of town. Sarajevo isn't that big, but it's a very sort of long city. Sarajevo, the tunnel was built like a year into the war, so we're just gonna go and visit there now. It was random, mm -hmm. but the bomb directly will kill nine people. Yeah. The sign, where you see the Sarajevo, the sign being painted by the red. Uh-huh. Actually, the, it's massacre spot. After the painted by the red, it's memorial. Yeah. Sarajevo roses. Nine people were yeah. killed. Family caller, who was the owner of the house, they will live in the basement. So we've just arrived at the Tunnel Museum and my tour guide, I've ended up getting a private tour because I'm the only one that booked on, um, but he's agreed to answer a question. So the tunnel that we're at at the moment, you know, what key part did it play in the Bosnian War? Could you tell us that? Absolutely. The, I was 18 mm -hmm. and the three months when war started here. Officially, war started April 92. I was born January 74. <laughs> and in the war started like a volunteer. Yeah. 18 years and three months. Really, nobody asked me, let's go fight here, never mean for the uh, religion issue, for the political issue, for the... Some people believe the Muslims here fight mm -hmm. here for the Islamic State. Yeah. No. My mission in the war, I'd like to stay alive. Yeah. Also, I'm the oldest child in my family. 
younger brother, sister, who will mm -hmm. protect them? Yeah. It was the mandatory of the, my father yeah. and myself. Yeah. Plus, this one, Sarajevo, is my home city. Yeah. BH is my homeland. Mm -hmm. This is the tunnel that we're at at the moment. The tunnel was under the blue, under the yeah. cross of the runaway. Uh, this one, under the red, it was the Sarajevo under the siege. Mm -hmm. Quarter million and 300,000 Sarajevans yeah. live there. Okay. No water, no supply, no nothing. Yeah. It was literally like a ghetto. Mm -hmm. Every day covered with 329 bombs. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, my tour guide lived through this. He's very knowledgeable and very lucky to have a private tour essentially right now. But I think the more time, I think I said in, earlier in the vlog, the more time that I'm spending in this country, the more I'm understanding its complex history and just how terrible it is. Like, I couldn't imagine living through this. Like I said, the year before I was born, 1993, was when this was all going on. This tunnel that we're at at the moment was the only way that the people in Sarajevo could get things like food, water, supplies, electricity. So a year into the war before, this tunnel was built and it took four months and I think four days to build. So absolutely incredible, but it's 800 meters and only a meter wide. So you can imagine how grueling it must have been to actually go through the tunnel. And my tour guide even said he used to go through the tunnel twice a week for supplies for family because there was free territory on the other side that wasn't taken over by the Serbians. This is sort of where I'm staying in Sarajevo at the moment and there was no public transport back in that day so the tunnel is here so if you wanted supplies you had to go or walk 12 kilometers whilst risking your life because people are attacking from all around the city and then get to this tunnel and get permission to go through the tunnel to the other side and here in Butmir is where people would buy supplies. I feel like I'm learning a lot, like I'm, I'm getting lots of history lessons guys, but I hope you're also finding this interesting because I was never taught this stuff at school and it's it's really sad. So I've got towards the end of the tour and we are just at the entrance of the tunnel that was the other side of the airport so I'm gonna go down here. This is crazy, oh my god. Whoa. This this is how small the tunnel is. It's one meter widthways, but having to go this low for 800 meters must have been crazy. But I couldn't imagine being in the war zone like this. This is crazy, guys. I can't believe I'm in the tunnel in Sarajevo. I think I might have gone the wrong way. That would be something I would do. This has probably been one of the most educational days of my life. I'm not even joking. I've learned so much. But this is just the coolest thing. If you come to Sarajevo, make sure you check out this tunnel. And now we are back out here. Oh. Okay, so that concludes my tour of the Sarajevo tunnel, very interesting. I know that you can come here on your own accord, but I would highly recommend going with a tour just because you're gonna get all the information, all the facts from someone that has lived through this war and someone that has lived that, my tour guide has lived in Sarajevo his whole life. And if I, I was gonna come here on my own and I think if I did that, I wouldn't have learned all this information because you can read about it, but it's much better to have someone talk to you about it. So yeah, another heavy day in Sarajevo. So I'm gonna head back with my tour guide to Sarajevo. Okay, so one last thing I'm gonna do before I end this vlog, I'm in the old town in Sarajevo and local legend has it, if you drink the water from this fountain behind me, you will return to Sarajevo. So I kind of like those odds. So I'm just gonna have a sip on camera and see if I come back. This can like hold me accountable and see if I actually come back to Sarajevo or not. I'd say one thing that I haven't shown as much in this vlog is the old town in Sarajevo is absolutely beautiful and it changes so drastically from the Austro-Hungarian side down to the Turkish side, which I'm in at the moment. 
there is mosques everywhere, there is churches, cathedrals, there's a lot of food. So if you like food, definitely come down to the old town. So I'm probably gonna leave this vlog here. So thank you guys so much for watching my video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And yeah, make sure you hit subscribe. Go follow me at Dane Luca on Instagram for daily updates. And I will see you guys in the next country, which we're going to tomorrow. Country number 23 or 24, which is Serbia. So take care and peace out. But yeah, today we are going to an abandoned Olympus. That didn't make sense. To oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> okay, so we are at the top now and oh, what was I gonna say? Okay, um, but the main, so we've decided, well, I'm pretty sure that the, oh my God, I can't speak properly. So I've t I'm, I just do loads of like weird shit. It's crazy to think that standing right here, this is one of the, it's crazy to, oh my God.